Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Falcon 9 first stage landing mishap. TCCA type certification for Piper M700 Fury. EAA narrows the 2025 Air Academy age focus. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited. I'm your host, Holland Lee. Let's get into today's stories. Falcon 9 first stage landing mishap. After nearly 300 extraordinary landings of a Falcon 9 first stage booster, Booster 1062, SpaceX's oldest booster to date, on its 23rd flight fumbled the landing and the vehicle was lost shortly after touchdown. On Wednesday, August 28th at 3.48 a.m. Eastern, Falcon 9 launched 21 Starlink satellites, including 13 with direct-to-cell capabilities to low Earth orbit from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. This was the 23rd flight for the first stage booster supporting the mission, which previously landed GPS-3 Space Vehicle 4, GPS-3 Space Vehicle 5, Inspiration 4, AX-1, Nylasat 301, OneWeb Launch 17, Arabsat BADR-8, and now 16 Starlink missions. After a successful ascent, Falcon 9's first stage booster tipped over following touchdown on the A Short Fall of Gravitas drone ship. Teams are assessing the booster's flight data and status. This was the booster's 23rd launch, making it the most reused booster in the SpaceX fleet. Slow-mo examination of the video during the landing shows at least one landing leg giving way before the booster toppled over, the cause for which will need to be determined before SpaceX continues launching Falcon 9s. After the break, Polish military acquires their first F-35A. Hello, pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. Polish military acquires their first F-35A. Lockheed Martin recently presented the Polish government with their first A-35A Lightning II. They unveiled the aircraft during a rollout ceremony at Lockheed's F-35 production facility in Fort Worth, Texas. It was attended by American and Polish senior government officials and military leaders. Over more than 100 years of the Polish Air Force, there have been many generations of pilots and aircraft. Major General Irenusz Nowak, inspector of the Polish Air Force, said, quote, I am proud to be part of history today, introducing the F-35 as the next generation which will protect and defend Poland's future for many years. We are joining a strong coalition of fifth-generation fighters across Europe, bolstering air superiority through allied deterrence, end quote. Poland is the most recent investor in the F-35's Allied Deterrence. Their new fighter, officially named Hussars, to honor one of their historic cavalry units, boosts the nation's military modernization efforts and permits expanded foreign mission participation. The first of 32 total F-35As, specified as AZ-01, will be delivered to the Poland Air Force in December. Pilot training will be conducted at Ebbing Air National Guard Base in Arkansas. Canadian Wings of Rescue Saving Animal Lives 
The Canadian Owners and Pilots Association has a group who combine their twin loves of aviation and animals to make a significant impact on their communities by providing public benefit flying opportunities to help animals in need of air transportation for medical treatment. The Canadian Wings of Rescue is a federally regulated volunteer charity group made up of pilots and volunteers who coordinate flights with animals needing treatment. Over the past 11 years, the 200-plus pilots of CWOR have provided flights for more than 1,200 animals. Drone Operator Violations Draw FAA Fines the FAA has issued a total of $341,413 in fines to 27 people who violated regulations governing drone operations between October 2022 and June 2024. The hazards of flying drones unsafely or in an unauthorized manner have been identified and specified in detail in FAR Part 107. Knowledge of the Part 107 regs is required and included in the test for the Part 107 Remote Pilot Certificate. People who choose to ignore the regulations around flying drones are now subject to fines of up to $75,000. NTSB blames helicopter crash on lack of FAA oversight. The NTSB has reported that the FAA was partly to blame for a West Virginian military helicopter crash while operating on an experimental airworthiness certificate. The accident caused by an engine failure killed all six people on board. A Bell UH-1B Huey helicopter went down in Amherstdale, West Virginia. The engine had lost power due to the failure of one of its components. Then, during an attempted emergency landing, the rotorcraft reportedly ran into power lines. NTSB investigators stated that the helicopter operator, Marpat Aviation, should have noticed fatigue cracks and other engine damage in inspections. That's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. TCCA Type Certification for Piper M700 Fury Piper Aircraft announced its new M700 Fury single-engine turboprop has received its type certification from Transport Canada Civil Aviation. The certification also includes approval for flight into known icing. Piper Aircraft has a history in GA going back 85 years, and the M700 Fury is the fastest single-engine aircraft in its history with a max cruise speed of 301 knots true airspeed and a max range of 1,424 nautical miles. It's powered by the Pratt & Whitney PT-6A-52 engine and comes with advanced safety features including the Halo Safety System, Certified Fiki System, and Emergency Auto Land. Having Fiki certification is valuable in regions like Canada where icing is frequently encountered, enabling operations year-round and improving reliability. John Calcagno, President and CEO of Piper Aircraft, said, quote, the first international certification of the M700 Fury with Fiki from TCCA is a crucial part of the overall value proposition of the M700 Fury, as well as a key safety feature for operators. The certification not only validates our commitment to safety and performance, but also opens new markets for this exceptional aircraft." End quote. Having the TCCA certification enables Piper to pursue international validations in more countries, and deliveries to global customers are scheduled for later this year. After these messages, EAA narrows the 2025 Air Academy age focus. I think it's a very important thing to share the joy and love of flying. Our customers fly to remote places. They use our products to go places that are difficult to get to. Hearts has been an excellent partner for Whip Air, uh, just in terms of your product support, as well as keeping an eye on the market and developing new products that meet demands. And it is that shared experience and the joy of flying that brings us all back and charges all of our batteries up. For over 30 years, the massive Sport Plane Resource Guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all-new digital Sport Plane Resource Guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated, and even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon. www.sportplane.com The legendary BD4C program is building an exciting future for those who want a rugged four-seat family flyer with a proven history. The SureWings program produces a complete kit and builder assist program that gives you everything you need to be flying a BD4CS in record time. 
For conventional kit builders, BD Aviation has parts, partial kits, and full kits for the 190 mile per hour BD4C that has logged thousands of hours. Visit Sherwings.com and BDAviation.com for more details. Welcome back. EAA narrows the 2025 Air Academy age focus. The EAA has confirmed that registration for their 2025 Air Academy will be opening on September 3rd. This year, the organization has narrowed its focus to providing more opportunities for 14 to 18-year-olds. The EAA Air Academy idea surfaced in 1983 when the then Education Director Chuck Larson was brainstorming with former Museum Director Ralph Bufano on how to reach a younger audience. They decided that the best idea would be to create an overnight camp for children to interact with aircraft. They opened the academy just a year later. Camp Director Scott Cameron said, quote, It's just fun to see the excitement, but also the tears at the end of the program when kids leave. It's not tears of sadness or anything, but because they've made such quality friendships with colleagues, fellow campers, and we did hit a heartstring with them. To me, that's what's important. But we're also carrying out EAA's mission and expanding aviation for young people, end quote. Until last year, the camp was divided into sessions for ages 12 to 18. They had a Young Eagles camp for 12 and 13 year olds, a basic camp for those aged 14 and 15, and an advanced camp for 16 to 18. However, the Air Academy waitlist has only gotten longer each year. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.